Hey everyone, thank you for stopping by Stars of the Diamond, and my name is Rhett Yakely, and uh, today I'm going to be kind of covering some recent um, pickups that I've had, and uh, I kind of got four major lots in a recent auction house, and uh, I'm going to kind of cover those. So I've covered a lot, I've made a lot of videos about Z-Nut cards, and so I've got two groups of these, and they're actually pretty significant little groups of cards, but I'm not going to belabor those too, too much. So, but uh, I got a nice group of the 1920 Z-Nut cards, and they are really distinct looking because they have that simulated grandstand in the background. So they tend to be one of the more popular Z-Nut card sets. And for those that aren't familiar with Z-Nuts, these are basically like a California or West Coast version of Cracker Jack. And in each pack, you got one of these cards. And at the bottom, at the beginning, was a um, was a coupon. And that coupon could be redeemed. And so that is why you often find these with the tears on the bottom. So you can kind of see a portion of that coupon down there. But uh, the 1920 set has some pretty cool players in it. Um, there's a Sam Crawford in this set and um, amongst other people, but just a really fun looking set. These, this is actually a pretty clean group. Uh, I picked this up. Yeah, that one's pretty rough. Um, picked this group up because there was about four or five out of this group that I actually needed. And I'm sure there's going to be quite a few of these that are upgrades as well. I'm uh, pretty sure I needed Fred Molwitz. Um, I don't remember there being any significant names. Harl Maggart is one of the guys that got kicked out of baseball in the uh, California League or Pacific Coast League version of the Black Sox scandal. Uh, Ray Keating, Ike McGauley, Jack Knight, he is a uh, T206 subject. O'Shaughnessy, Remy Kremer. Uh, Willie Cam went on to have a long major league career. Uh, Fuzzy Thurston, uh, Bill Rumler is kind of a cool one. He actually got kicked out of baseball in 1920 in that scandal, but then was one of the few people in professional baseball to be reinstated. And so he actually later, after 1920 getting kicked out of baseball, he was able to get back into baseball and has a card in the 1929 set after about seven or eight years of trying to get back in. Earl Sheely as well. I think I needed that card. That's a clean example from a 1920. Um, he also had a very long, uh, pretty good major league career as well. So cool card there. Bill Rogers, um, Jim Scott, Denny Wiley, Worth, and Fud, uh, Fud, uh, Fuzzy Wares. And uh, he would go on to have a long, long career as a coach for the St. Louis Cardinals. So pretty fun little group there. Definitely some upgrades for my set and uh, a few cards that I actually did need as well. Okay. And uh, probably the, the most expensive group that I bought that um, I'll share here with you are these 1914 Z-Nuts. And this actually, to me, I feel like the 1914 Z-Nut set is probably one of the tougher Z-Nut sets to find, um, honestly, and it doesn't get a lot of love. Spiderbaum, uh, Babe Borton, he was also one of those guys that got kicked out in 1920. So what a lot of people don't realize is, is that with the Black Sox scandal, a lot of those, what actually tied most of those guys that were in the scandal together was that they all played, for the most part, in the Pacific Coast League with each other. So it was a largely, in a way, sort of a West Coast scandal, if you would. Because all those guys, um, you know, Chick Gandel, uh, Claude, Lefty Williams, Swede Risberg, Happy Felsch, all those guys played together at the same time in the mid-teens to late teens in this Pacific Coast League. And a lot of the only cards that those players ever had, Fred McMullen, for example, was a 1915 Zenut card. So kind of a, an interesting little... Um, tidbit there some of these guys in this set are were their friends so this is kind of a cool card in 1911 1912 1913 and then finally in 1914 for whatever reason inexplicably there's exactly one horizontal card in each set and uh, this is the 1914 
uh, horizontal card. And uh, not a great player by any stretch of the imagination, but these horizontal ones always command a pretty s extreme um, premium over the others, uh, instead of being kind of vertical like every other card in the set. So whereas a regular card from the set may be, you know, $30, $40 for a card like that, up to $70 or $80 for a common in real nice condition, um, rarities obviously go for a lot more. That's a weird picture. These uh, horizontal ones typically sell for several hundred dollars and that 1911 is a uh, Hala is one of the most beautiful cards that was ever made and sells for upwards of a thousand dollars or more but I'm pretty sure I need more so in this group I actually only needed about three or four of this of all these cards another weird pose I don't know why Z-Nuts always had these weird poses but they do uh, Charlie O'Leary the old Tigers guy but uh so I'll compare these with, a. Uh, he's always in weird poses. Um, the ones that I already have and put the ones that I need in my set. He's a guy that actually can be found as Rainy with an N or Rainy with an M. Bill Rogers again. Sailor Stroud, Tenant, Tobin, Tozer. This card I did need, Huck Sawyer. Boss Schmidt, Quinlan White, that's um, Doc White, uh, what, the White Sox player, and Wes, and I'm pretty sure I needed Young as well. So I needed like three or four of those guys, but going to have quite a few duplicates. But uh, those are the 1914 and the 1920 Zenut cards that I picked up. And that kind of leads me to two of the other pickups that I had. i um, not sure which one I'm going to cover first. I'll go with these first. Um, so basically, this is a large group of what are called J Publishing photos. And J Publishing photos made these 5x7 um, premium photos on thin stock. And they would sell them as um, souvenirs in, in the early years, envelopes just like this. And it was 25 cents, and there were 12 Phillies photos. Now... Um, J, J Publishing Photos made these for for basically every major league team from 1958 all the way to 1965. And they can be found in two distinct types. And uh, oftentimes they're found still in the envelope or in a group in the envelope. And uh, it's a, it's 12 players and they would kind of shift around players. But some some of the more popular guys can be found with the same photo or different photos over multiple years being changed ever so slightly with the croppings and stuff like that. But in 1958 to 1961, in the first incarnation of the J Publishing photos, they're easily recognized because they have this blocky, non-serif or sans-serif font. And uh, it's a little thicker, and you can kind of see what that looks like. And in later years, they went with um, this. They went with the serif font with little serif highlights on the on the ends. So instead of having that block letters, they're thinner and they have the serif font. Now, um, this group had, I don't know what it was, 200, 200 and something plus um, total photos and about half of which were autographed. And the autographed ones were the real ones that I wanted. Um, I have quite a few of these autographed. To me, I think these are perfect vehicles for autograph collecting. And uh, these were often sold at the stadiums in souvenir shops, and then you could take them right down to the field and get players to sign them. And that seems to be what this particular person did, because he's got every... These photos back here are the unsigned ones with their envelopes. These ones on the top are the ones that are autographed. So I'll go over kind of the autographed ones. Um, some of the bigger names, obviously, in the 1950s, um, uh, 60s Phillies are the Hall of Famers, Richie Ashburn and uh, Robin Roberts. But uh, I don't know if I actually, I, kind of rewinding a little bit, the Type 2 with the, uh, the serif font, those were made from 1962 to 1965. So 1958 to 61 with the Type 1s, 1962 to 65 with the Type 2s, okay? So uh, the autographed ones, we got a Richie Ashburn here, and there will be some repetition because these are from multiple years. 
Um, Eddie Sawyer. Here's a Robin Roberts pitching pose here with the Phillies. Um, here's a Robin Roberts. That's a, that's a, yeah, these are both just different years, both type ones. And here's a later one, you know, with the actual Phillies. Here's an Ashburn Phillies. And I believe these actually, when they just say Phillies like this, this may be a different actual set. These may be team issued, not particularly Jay. Chris Short, he's a tough one. Um, he passed away young, younger than many. So um, his, his autograph just tends to be, it's kind of a sloppy autograph, but it tends to be a tougher one to find and kind of pricey. Harvey Haddix. Uh, Hall of Famer Jim Budding, uh, he would later become a senator, Senator uh, Jim Budding, and uh, recently passed away not too, too long ago. Kurt Simmons, you got Robin Roberts, Granny Hamner, another Robin Roberts, so as you can see, a lot of the same players. Here's a, another Richie Ashburn, there's Gene Mock, the manager, another Gene Mock. It says new Gene Mock, Andy Semenik, Rip Rapolsky, Chico Fernandez. And this set, I think, actually is from predates the Jays. These older looking ones. Stan Lopata. Harry Anderson, Bob Bowman. So I'm just going to kind of go through these somewhat quickly, but you can kind of see... Uh, so these ones have been dated, 1959s here in this little group. So this is, again, thinner stock, not J issues. Roy Seavers, Bobby Wine Sr. So here's a J issue from 1960. A lot of the same players that we were just seeing before. Ruben Gomez, Harry Hannabrink, Ramon Reyes Sembrach, Ruben Amaro. So a lot of repetition of the same kind of players. That's a late in career Al Dark. Pancho Herrera, Eddie Sawyer. But uh, 1961's here. So this should be the last year that they have that sans serif font. And then 62, I believe they go into that new style. So here's 1962. And again, just a lot of the same players, but if you're a Phillies collector, this is kind of the uh, the mother load of Phillies autographs. And uh, there are some, you know, kind of tougher guys kind of, you know, in here. But again, all of these ones at the top here are uh, authentically autographed. And they came from the auction house with a letter of authenticity, you know, kind of attesting to their, their authenticity. But again, just a lot of the same, same players. And that one they couldn't date. So again, those are the autographed J's or J-like five by seven photos. And then in addition, we have all of these that were the unautographed versions of those. So some of these, I collect them kind of both ways. If I have a choice, I collect them autographed, but you kind of take them however you can. And again, oftentimes you are finding them in um, groups. Don Hope, I didn't even know that. I forgot he even played for the Phillies. So those are our Jays, and uh, I will be comparing those. I don't know that I had really specialized in Phillies. This collection that had come up for sale just happened to feature mostly Phillies. But uh, the next group is actually pretty interesting to me. And uh, at first, you know, these are kind of underappreciated in the baseball card world because for the most part, these tend to be collected autographed because these are Hall of Fame plaque postcards. And we all know those as, you know, um, the yellow ones that they have today. And um, I'm gonna go over a quick history of these because they're actually several separate sets issued over a number of years. So in 1939, they began printing these 
um, Hall, of Flame, Hall of Fame plaque postcards for those that had been inducted into the Hall of Fame up to that point. And uh, the really early ones are actually really hard to find. And they are easily, um, you know, distinguished because they don't have any writing down at the base of them. And so it's just the plaque postcard on the front and a postcard back. And those, again, are date to 1939 and uh, hard to hard to find. OK, but um, later um, in 1944, the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum and Hall of Fame, as it was called, began to have a company called Albertype, which was a big postcard producer at the time to make their postcards for them. And uh, they will say that on the back, actually right here, Albert Time Company, Brooklyn, New York. And so these are um, Albert Type postcards. Now in 1944, they began to make these. And in 1953, Albert Time actually no longer start, was producing them for the Baseball Hall of Fame. And that contract went to a new company and uh, that new company was called Artview. I believe these are, yeah. So these are the Artviews. So, and, and they say distinctly on the back, Artview, right down here. So the Artview Postcard Company, Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. Um, so Artview would make them from 1953 to 1962. So 44 to 52. 53 to 62 and then in 1963 and on they changed from a black and white postcard to a yellow or sometimes people call these gold but they're yellow uh, plaque postcards and most people think of these as just being kind of one set from 63 on but they actually are multiple sets and uh, I'll kind of show you real quick the first incarnation of these uh yellow plaque postcards was this Kurtite color okay so they would make these and here is a Lou Boudreaux with the green Kurtite color back now that's kind of the early back um, Boudreaux was inducted in 1970 so this one dates from 1970 or, or later um, and they would then in later years actually make them with a black instead of green. I don't know if that color really comes through or not, but you can distinctly see it in hand. And uh, that is another gold plaque or yellow plaque postcard. And uh, then later there were, you know, different ones, you know, having the little publisher here and with the manufacturer over here, uh, Mike Roberts Color Productions. And then on this one, we've got 2012. So um, just four different actual styles and then in a weird period in the mid 70s they had the dexter press make them in funky colors and those ones are kind of kind of gaining in popularity a little bit i don't have any in front of me the they were tough because the the autographs were hard to put on the dexter ones but they're really kind of funky looking compared to these other ones but for the most part people collect either yellow hall of fame plaque postcards autographed or white but today, again, that's a big, long, you know, description of what you're going, what we're going over today. But I'm going to be talking about the black and white ones here today. So those are the yellows. They came later. So Albert Type um, made two distinct sets, okay? In 1944 and 45, for those two years, they made what are called Albert Type Type 1s. Now, the Type 1s, um, they only have you know not as many players were featured on those postcards um the type ones i believe only have 38 something like that 38 um total players because that's all that were in the hall of fame by 1945 and uh so this is almost a complete set i'm missing two or three and uh the 19 the type one albert types and the type two albert types can be distinctly shown in a quick and simple way. On the front, where it says Cooperstown, New York, if it says NY abbreviated, that's a type one. Cooperstown, New York, with the New York spelled out is type two. So Albert type type one, Albert type type two, okay? 
Now the type two Albert types have, uh, I think, 60, 63, yeah, so 63 different. Uh, the type ones have 38 different. And those are just the players. So um, we'll kind of go through here. And of, of course, anybody that was in the Hall of Fame by 1945 would be on these. And so you've got, you know, a 1938 or 44 uh, card of Ty Cobb. So this card right here of Ty Cobb was produced, distributed and everything in 1944. And an unautographed un version of this um, wouldn't seem like much of anything, but again, it is a legitimate baseball card sold to, you know, the public in 1944 and 1945 of Ty Cobb. So uh, the reality is, is this should hold probably more value than it really does. So, um, and uh, if we kind of go towards the back here, uh, there's a Babe Ruth. So this plaque postcard of Babe Ruth was distributed in 1944 and 45, um, years before the leaf, years before a lot of his other items that hold quite significant value. Uh, but this can be a really, really good value bang for your buck, a legitimate Babe Ruth card from when he was still alive, um, period piece. And uh, so maybe one of the better deals in the entire hobby, to be honest. So uh, this is, I think, 35 of the 38 players. But what many don't under realize is, is that these other postcards here, and I'll show you, are various cards that were actually made and distributed at the exact same time by the Baseball Hall of Fame. So they had this bust of Christy Matheson um, on display at the Baseball Hall of Fame. And uh, this card is from the same series as all these plaque, plaque postcards of the players in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we had the uh, notoriously not accurate story of Abner Doubleday uh, being the, you know, grandfather of baseball. So they really played that up. And so they sold a postcard of him. Um, somewhat famous artwork. Um, we had Abner Doubleday you know, a mantelpiece with him there. Um, they had some old lithographs that they had reproduced. And again, these are distinctly type ones because they actually do say Cooperstown, New York with the NY, even on the ones that have nothing on the front, they'll say that. And I'll show you on the type twos, again, we have many of those same, but the NY is spelled out New York. And so there's some trade cards. There's that same Christy Matheson now with New York written out. But they made a bunch of other um, non-technical players. Uh, here's actual pictures within the Hall of Fame. And uh, these ones are actually probably harder to find than the actual baseball players. Because who honestly went to the Baseball Hall of Fame and like, ah, that's, what, that's the one I'm going to get. Okay, picture Cy Young there in the background. That's what I'm going to get. You can kind of see that piece, that artwork that's right over there is this same piece of art that they have. Eh, where is it? Right here. Maybe not. That I showed earlier. So it's in here somewhere, but that was on display at the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's why they made this. And again, so these are uh, Type 2 Albert types. And uh, so this is a collection of... 56 of the 63 and these are things I got all of these together and uh, I had never you know it's always been a set that I've liked I thought you know what those are great values for what they are and at you know five ten dollars for an average card uh, of a legitimate baseball card produced and distributed in 1940s and 50s can't go wrong at that but the group was so large and on a per item basis, it was so cheap, I just couldn't say no. So you have an instant collection of those. And uh, later, moving into the uh, art view. Okay, so these ones were started to be made in 1953. And they made two distinct styles with the art view postcards. And uh, I'm not sure where I have these stopped here. Okay, here's that same artwork that was on display in the Hall of Fame. So here's the type ones here. 
And uh, this, these are actually bigger sets, um, but in the group that I got, these were far less represented. And so um, in this group, there was only, I think, 45, 50 of the 80 players that were in the Hall of Fame. And so what you'll actually find with these is that some of the guys, um, for example, in the Type 2 Albert types, there were guys that were produced um, in Type 2 from 1946 all the way to 52. But then there were certain players that were inducted into the Hall of Fame later. Okay, so they weren't produced in the same quantity because they weren't made from 46 all the way to 52. So if you're inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1951 or 52, um, you know, you would not be in as many of those cards. So um, I think, for example, Paul Wehner is, was inducted in 1952. And so he's on an Albert type, type two, should have him in here. So uh, a Paul Wehner, where is he right there? So this card was only available in this style as an Albert type in 1952, that single year. So theoretically, he should be much, much harder to find than say a uh, Grover Cleveland Alexander that was in the Baseball Hall of Fame for every year from 1946 to 52. So there are varying levels of rarity, I'm sure. I've never done an extensive research or deep, deep dive into the numbers or anything like that that exist. But uh, so art view, there's type one and type two. Now the biggest, biggest difference and the way to tell these is looking in the corners, looking in the corners of the plaque itself. In the type ones, you have open rivets i guess is what you would call them and there are actually a few players in this type one that will have that colored in so like the mordecai brown here that's colored in but those are still technically open rivets and then type twos which were only made um from 56 to 62 have actual screws baseball shaped screws in those corners and so that's the big difference between the type one um, Albert type or uh, art view with the open rivet and the type two, which has the baseball rivets in the corner. And again, both of these will have art view backs. So that's kind of your basic primer for um, these cards, but kind of cool, um, really fairly inexpensive at the present time. But there's some really, really cool cards. Uh, for example, um, I believe, let's see, what year was, let's make sure, I'm gonna look it up just so I'm not saying something that's incorrect. But uh, Jackie Robinson, for example, was I believe inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1962. And so he was only available as a white, black and white Hall of Fame plaque postcard in 1962, because that was the last year they made them. So one single year. So um, I believe I have a Robinson, yeah. So here's a 1962 Jackie Robinson uh, plaque postcard. And again, this should be a fairly tough one to find. And, uh, you know, obviously as a autographed version, if you were to have one of these authentically autographed by Jackie Robinson, that would be a prize piece. Um, anything with Jackie Robinson's autograph has gone up significantly in value. But this is probably one of his more underrated uh, items that he was on. But anyways, that's kind of your basic primer for the black and white Hall of Fame postcards. And this group was so large. It was really a fun group to kind of go through. And if you think that's a lot, these are the doubles that I ended up with. Okay, so I will have probably quite a few of these for sale um, on my eBay store. And if you don't know my eBay store, it's on eBay as KRY Vintage. And uh, you will likely find some uh, duplicates of things that I have on there. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Again, just kind of a hodgepodge video of what I've been able to pick up lately. Um, hope you guys are having a great hobby, really enjoying it. Um, prices seem to be kind of stabilizing a little bit and, you know, in some cases even coming down, but, uh, 
Hopefully you're able to pick up some cool stuff. And as always, everybody, happy collecting.